Okay, this week's video is going to be a little bit different from my regular content, but you guys really seem to like this video right here. And so I thought maybe I would start creating some more content similar to the style of content that I watch here on YouTube. And before we get into the video, I do wanna apologize for the lighting. I live in an area that's surrounded by glass buildings and we're just at that weird time of day where the light is just reflecting off of every building around me. So if the lighting's a little bit weird, I do apologize. Now, if you haven't guessed it already, my favorite type of YouTube content to watch is anti-scam, anti-MLM content. So really just any video where they are unearthing the unethical practices that happen a lot in the online space where disadvantaged or vulnerable people are taken advantage of for somebody else to be able to make a ton of money. Now, at this point in time, I don't intend to shift all of my content in this direction. I am still on a mission to make small business as accessible for as many people as possible. However, if you are enjoying this more anti-scam, anti-coaching industry style of content, please let me know in the comments and maybe we can turn it into a more regular series here on my channel. Now, in today's video specifically, I'm gonna be talking about why I think the coaching industry has become so problematic over the past few years. And I'm also gonna talk about a lot of the common themes and red flags that I've noticed as I've been so directly involved in the coaching industry for almost five years now. And so I'm actually gonna go over some screen recordings of tactics that I see coaches use to try and sell their program to vulnerable people. And so as a little bit of a disclaimer before we get into the video, I do just wanna state that the video clips that I show aren't a specific attack on the individuals. In fact, the people in the videos that I'm going to show you, I don't even know who they are. I simply came across these videos and wanted to use them as a demonstration of the problematic behavior that I see time and time again. And so if you know the people in the videos, please do not out them in the comments. It is not about them. It is simply about the rhetoric that they are spreading on the internet, okay? Because what I see time and time again is these coaches using scammy business tactics to teach people nothing but charge thousands of dollars and create these six and seven figure businesses on top of a mountain of fluff. Like what is the actual substance? What are you actually teaching here? Because again, in my opinion, everything in this video is my opinion. If you are starting a business to coach other people on how to start a business, coaching other people on how to start a business to coach other people, you're essentially generating a pyramid scheme. Maybe not in the traditional sense of the definition of a pyramid scheme, but essentially you're selling people on this hope or dream to then go ahead and sell that same hope or dream to other people. And no one actually is generating any substance and no one is actually generating a business of significance. And more often than not, this is all rooted in this idea that we can all get rich on the internet if we just believe enough in ourselves. And I'm gonna put some screenshots up on the screen here so you can kind of see the rhetoric that I'm talking about. And I'm sure you've seen these ads on Instagram, on Facebook, all over the internet of people talking talking about how you can make so much money in so little time and only work like a few hours a week. And so what I notice in each of these ads is that the creators are constantly bragging about how much money they make, but they never actually talk about what they do as a business. It's never about the business practice so much as it is about making tons of money. And so these ads are always about this potential to make a ton of money if you just start that business and then they package it all under this guise of self-help or self-improvement and tell you that you're gonna make your life better if you spend thousands of dollars on my coaching program, I can teach you how to also make thousands of dollars. And so I think that the videos that I'm about to show you are gonna speak to this even further. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop right into that part of the video. Okay, so this first video here is actually titled How I Made $200,000 in Cash This Month. I had my biggest ever month in May and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. So in May, we did right about 180. You can see here, it says May 1st to June 1st. First thing we did was we made a game plan. So we had a target of $200,000 a month. We made a game plan to make that happen. Second thing we did was we took a line action every single day. You've gotta be consistent when you wanna hit things. Third, third thing we did is we stuck to the game plan no matter what, and we stayed grateful the whole time. Follow for more. Okay. So there's nothing inherently wrong with this video, but I think that what I see, not necessarily only in this video, but in so many of these coaches' videos online, is that they're not really teaching you anything. 
So she starts the video by showing you that she made $200,000, which is great. But then all she really says is set a goal to make $200,000, take a line to action and have a game plan. Like that's not really teaching me the step-by-step -step instructions on how I can also make $200,000. And I understand that a lot of the times they don't want to share their quote unquote trade secrets, because if I tell you everything on how to do it, then you're not gonna pay me to teach you how to do it. But I just think that it's very surface level and superficial when I see these videos like this, because again, you're not really teaching me anything of substance. You're not teaching me tactics to be a better business owner. You're simply just saying, you know, if I can just believe that I'll make a million dollars by next month and I take aligned action to make a million dollars, I'm gonna be a millionaire. And the reality is, is that that's not how life works. So again, I just see this time and time again and I find it really, really irritating because you're not teaching anything of substance. Okay, this next video is called Unpopular Opinion, Making Money Online is Easy. So let's just see how easy it is. I had it up to here with people on the internet saying that making money is hard. No, making money on the internet is not hard. You know what's hard? Sitting at your desk job all day long, working for someone else, logging in every single day, logging out, going and working a part-time job. Um, I don't know, coming home from work, being absolutely exhausted, drinking your life away, then having to ask your boss if you can take two weeks on vacation to go live your life that God gave you, but you have to ask someone else. That to me is hard. And so for anyone else, it's like, I don't get the how. I don't know how to make money on the internet. What do you mean you don't know how? You do know how. Just like you know, drinking water is good for you. Just like you know, eating broccoli is good for you. Getting outside is good for you. You do know the how, you're just not thinking. Be resourceful. Google it, hire someone, get in there, take action. You wanna know the best way to learn how to post on TikTok? Go post 100 videos on TikTok and then you'll be good at posting on TikTok. You wanna learn how to sell? Go sell 500 million times and then you'll be good at selling. Now, I don't inherently disagree with the point at the beginning how a lot of us find ourselves, you know, working jobs that we don't like. If you followed me for any amount of time, you know that I left my nine to five because I felt like I was trapped in a position where I was gonna be stuck at this job that I hated for the next 40 years and I just couldn't see myself doing that. But I don't really think it's fair to say that we all know the how in terms of how to make money online. I think that, again, there's this sort of ongoing narrative that if you want to learn how to make money online, for example, you can figure it out. And you absolutely can. But the problem that I think this video fails to address is a lot of the systematic issues that are in place and sort of work against a lot of people who simply can't figure it out. So if I am a single mother and I have three kids and I'm working two jobs just to pay my bills and get by, I probably don't have the time to spend hours each week on YouTube, on Google, figuring out how to start an online business. It's just simply not the reality that a lot of people face because of systematic barriers that are in place that prevent them from being able to have the time or have the resources to hire someone or learn how to do those things. And so I think a lot of the videos I see, not necessarily just this one, come from a place of privilege where people aren't acknowledging the fact that perhaps they had systems or a position in place that allowed them to quit their job on a whim and be able to start their own business or to have the extra access to capital where they could afford to hire someone who is going to teach them how to start their own business. And so I don't think it's as simple as knowing how to start your own business and then being able to be super successful so much as having those places of privilege that enable a person to be able to explore different opportunities and find out how to make money online. I would actually be curious to know your thoughts down in the comments if this is something that you've thought about as well. Okay, this video is called How I Make $5,000 a Day. This should be a good one is everything I do step-by-step step to make $5,000 a day passively on average. The best part about this is that it only takes a couple of months to set up and you don't need a ton of capital. If you can help somebody solve a painful problem that they're having faster in a more effective, cheaper way, you can absolutely make a profitable course out of this. So now you wanna choose one social media platform that you enjoy to show up and create a piece of free content every single day related to your course topic. Even more importantly than growing a huge social media following is converting those new followers into an email list. So create a free 
resource guide like a PDF or a video that gives a small win to the people that are struggling and consistently show up and remind your audience how to download that free guide in exchange for getting their email. As you're growing your audience and email list, you're gonna start creating your course. Keep in mind the desired end result that your audience is looking for and map out a plan that's going to get them from where they are right now to that desired end result. So once your course is complete, this is where the passive side comes in. You're going to create an automated webinar. This webinar needs to lead with value. It needs to attract the right person and help them solve a small portion of their problem. And then it needs to sell the dream, paint a beautiful picture of how much better their life is going to be after they enroll in your course. And then if they don't purchase right from the webinar, you need to follow up with them with emails reminding them when they need to enroll by. It's an absolute win-win. You're helping people at all times of day and night, and you're also making sales at all times of day and night. Leave any questions questions that you guys have for me in the comments below. And if you want the step-by-step -step on how to set all of this up, my online course Academy teaches that and linked in my bio is a bunch more information because I'm following my own advice here. Okay. So I actually don't disagree with anything she shared in that video. If you've watched me for any amount of time, you know that I share a lot of these same marketing principles when it comes to building an online or regular business. It's important to know who your ideal client is, what problems they face and what solution you have to offer those people. And so when she mentions all of those things, again, I don't inherently disagree. I think she's totally correct. The issue I have again with this video and any video like this that I see is that she pulls you in with this concept of I make $5,000 a day under the impression that you could do it too. And what this video fails to leave out is the fact that building a business where you can be making $5,000 a day is going to take a lot of time. It's not as simple as creating that solution for people, building a webinar and selling an online course. You could follow all of those steps, but unless you have a massive audience, chances are you're not going to be converting enough people at a time to be making $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 a day. And so again, I don't inherently disagree with anything that she said in this video, but I think that what a lot of these coaches tend to leave out in their online marketing and advertising is the fact that there is a lot of upfront work and audience building that is required in order to make it to a point where you can start to have a profitable business based on these passive income streams. And I actually talk about the basic fundamentals of passive income in this video right here. But again, in that video, I mentioned the fact that a lot of these things take a lot of time to build to a point where you can start to generate passive income in a way that's sustainable and in a way that actually, you know, helps you to generate $5,000 a day. I haven't even figured that one out yet, but I know it is possible. It just takes a lot of time. Okay, this next video is gonna be good. It's titled $10,000 a month is not a lot of money. $10,000 is not a lot of money to make every month. And a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on this exact topic and so many people hated on it. And the funniest part is that all the people that were uh, hating on the post, it's that, they are literally the point of the post. It's to say that you are constantly being programmed by society to think that small amounts of money, it's a lot. Money isn't real. Money is not real. It is a made up thing. So when you start to realize that you are of high value, of importance, of you are worthy of charging certain prices, you are worthy of demanding thousands of dollars for your services, you will realize that money is just air. Money is just energy. When you start providing real value for your services and people pay you thousands of dollars, you wonder why you were ever undercharging yourself. You wonder why you ever took that job for that little salary that you got paid for. It's just because you didn't know. I had no idea when I was making $50,000 a year that I could be making that in a month. And now I'm like, okay, let's make that in a week and then a day and then an hour. Everything starts to shift. You have to take your power back. You have to realize how powerful you are. Okay, a lot to unpack here. Um... Honestly, this could be an entire video in itself, but I think that what we're seeing here is this really toxic narrative that I see online about, you know, healthy money mindset and believing in your worth, charging your worth, et cetera, et cetera, which I don't disagree with by any means, but I think there becomes this point, especially in this sort of self-help personal development space where you start to become so out of touch with reality that you begin to believe narratives like this. And so I actually see this time and time again where coaches are charging upwards of 
$5,000, $10,000, $20,000 for their coaching services to help people, you know, become their best self and figure out their true vision in life. But again, at what point do we put a stop to what someone's time is worth. Because I'm sorry, you could be the most skilled professional at whatever area your expertise is in, but to charge someone upwards of $1,000 an hour to me just makes literally no sense. And so I think what we see here is people entering the coaching industry being informed by their coaches that it's okay to charge thousands of dollars because if I'm Sally Smith and I paid Jane Doe $10,000 for her coaching program, Jane Doe is gonna tell me that it's okay for me to charge Sally Sue down the street $10,000 for my coaching program. And so they start to get so out of touch with what's going on in the real world because they're so stuck in this coaching bubble that they think it's normal to be charging $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 for their services, especially because they're tying it to this idea of worthiness and self-empowerment. And so if I'm not charging $10,000 for my coaching services, well, I must not believe in myself and I must not be that good at what I do. Because if I were worthy and I were a valid service provider, I would be comfortable charging that amount of money. And so I think that again, is just sort of this disconnect from reality almost that we tend to see over and over again that results in these people charging such absurd amount of money for their services. All right, we're back. I lost track of time, ended up having to hop off and go into a meeting and now I'm back and the lighting is different, but it's fine. We're still getting into it. We have a couple more videos to get through. So this next one doesn't have a title. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. The story of how I became an online business coach. Six years ago, I was a personal trainer and a life coach. My husband and I decided that we wanted to buy a home and we live in Portland, Oregon, and the market was fucking crazy. Simultaneous to when we were looking at homes, we got locked in our house. Literally the front bolt of our house locked and we had to call our landlord to come over and fix it. Now this landlord had never come over to fix anything. He always hired a handyman, but this particular time he had to come over to do it himself. So as he was here, I was standing by the door talking with him and telling him how we were looking for houses. And he mentioned, you know, I think there's a period of time for renting to other people that it's really advantageous to sell. And I think I might be at that particular time. The next conversation we had was him accepting an offer from us that was way lower than market value. The landlord and his girlfriend came over for us to sign the papers. When they got here, I was like, oh my gosh, his girlfriend is so cool. So my husband and the landlord went into the kitchen signing the papers and this woman, his girlfriend and I sat in the living room just talking. She tells me that she is a retired MD and now a life coach and she has an online coaching business. I was like, what the heck? I have always wanted to really pursue my life coaching business but I just did not know how to use the online space I never even really had considered. As she's telling me about it, she tells me about this woman, Marie Forleo, and how Marie Forleo does this free video series explaining how to run an online business. Has me get out my computer right away and sign in with my email to receive these videos. Later that evening after they left, I start watching the videos. She's explaining all about how to run an online business and how you can have so much freedom and help so many people. I was like, honey, sign me up. This experience and these videos literally catapulted me into being obsessed with the online space. There is a long journey from that point, so let me know if you wanna hear more of the story, but that is what got me into being a coach online, was being locked in our house, buying our house, and then getting turned on to the online space. Okay. I could do an entire full length video on Marie Forleo and that whole side of the self-development personal help space. But I think that the key thing that I find problematic in this video, once again, is that at the beginning of the video, she labels herself as a business coach but then goes into telling a story about how she met a successful life coach and decided that she was also going to pursue her own coaching business. So keep in mind, I don't know this individual, maybe in her business coaching sort of realm, she talks about how she used to own a personal training business and she teaches things that she learned in that process. 
But from what I'm getting from what she shared in this video and my own assumptions based on what I know of B-School by Marie Forleo and the type of content that she creates. Again, I think it's sort of likely that this is that sort of toxic cycle of I am a coach that coaches other coaches on how they can start their own coaching business. And again, at the end of the day, when we have that model, no one really has a business outside of coaching other people on how to start a business, but it's not an actual business. And that's the point I really want to make because I actually made a YouTube short a couple of months ago that really talked about this idea of it being like a pyramid scheme of coaches, coaching coaches on how to coach. And someone commented and said, yeah, but if they can make a lot of money running that business model, then that technically is a business. And okay, I understand that on paper it's a business, but at the end of the day, you're not really teaching any valuable skills or contributing anything of value. And I think that this is a conversation I have a lot of the times with friends of mine is this idea that in the business coaching and online coaching space, is that we're not really adding value to improve the world that we live in. And so I can teach you different techniques to, you know, have better self-worth and to defeat imposter syndrome and to feel good about yourself. And sure, that's helping, but in the grand scheme of things, what's often happening is that people who don't necessarily have the money are convinced to pay thousands of dollars on their credit cards, on their line of credit, to spend the last of their savings, to buy into this coaching program to then try and start their own coaching business but never really gain enough traction to see success. So then those people are left in a worse off position while these coaches are then left to reap the rewards of having essentially scammed people out of thousands of dollars. And so that's really the piece that I find problematic. Okay, so this next video is called The Identity Shift I Made from $100,000 a Year to $100,000 in One Month. The identity shift that I made to go from making $100,000 in a year to making $100,000 in a month. I will say it over and over again, but literally making money is a self-love game. The more you can fall in love with yourself, the more money you're going to make. The more you're obsessed with yourself, the more you follow through on what you say you're going to do. You show up, you dress the part, you, you take care of your health, you move your body, you invest in mentors, you do the things that are going to help you get to where you want to be the more money is going to flow in. The strategies are simple. If, but the thing is, if you just loved yourself and believed in yourself, you would figure out the strategy. No one taught me a strategy. My mentors, they don't teach me strategies. I figured it out on my own. And that's what successful entrepreneurs do, is you figure it out, find a way. If, so if you're at $100,000, it's not another it's not another strategy that you're going to need to implement and the crazy funnel and all of the things it's you need to show up on social media as more of the authority as people look at you and they're like wow she's incredible i want to work with her which you are so start showing up that way on social media and watch how many more people buy from you okay <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here i think that in the case of business or anyone who is, you know, the front face of their brand, there is definitely a piece of, you know, self-confidence and believing in your own self-worth that comes to play in terms of you being able to sell your products or services. So back when I was a yoga teacher and I owned a yoga studio, if I showed up online and was like, mm, well, I, I'm technically certified as a yoga teacher, but like, I don't really know if I should be teaching yoga, the chances of people buying into my private practice and wanting to hire me as their yoga teacher would be pretty slim. And so there is a space or a need for you to believe in your own self-worth and believe that you are capable of teaching whatever that thing is, whatever that skill is that you have that you're trying to market as a business owner. However, what's really problematic here is this idea that if I just believe in myself, I too am going to be successful and I'm going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I think that what a lot of these videos tend to lead people to believe is the latter, that if I just work on my self-worth, the strategy doesn't matter in terms of how I'm gonna make the money, I'm just gonna be able to make the money because I believe in myself. And that's not necessarily the reality. In fact, it's not the reality. When it comes to real life businesses, especially if we think in like the product or commerce space, 
there is a significant level of strategy that comes into play. Otherwise, these large corporations that we see wouldn't exist if strategy didn't matter. If big business could just believe it in itself enough to be successful, then why would they employ thousands of people to help them figure out the strategy to become successful? It just doesn't make sense. And so again, if we come back to this idea of being disconnected from reality, I think that this is a prime example in that a lot of these coaches tend to spin this rhetoric that if you just believe in yourself hard enough, you're going to be successful. And the reason why you're not successful is because you don't believe in yourself enough. And it comes into this place of toxic positivity almost where the blame is then put on you for not having that self worth and not doing enough work on yourself to believe hard enough to make that money when the reality is that in a real business there is a certain level of marketing strategy and sales strategy that goes into you being able to generate recurring amounts of revenue and to grow your business from ten thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars oh my god the sun just got so blindingly bright Okay, we're just gonna work here with what we've got. We're not gonna complain because I live in a city where it's raining 90% of the time and if the sun wants to come out, it's fine, we'll deal with it. So we only have two videos left. Let's go ahead and have a look. So this next video is a text overlay. I will just read it to you so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so on the screen here, it says, this is how you completely change your life in the next six months. Start an online coaching business to help people improve their lives, master client attraction, systems and sales, build a roster of 20 to 60 people happily paying you upwards of $500 a month, keep your biz simple or scale it to an empire, your choice. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, again, just like I've shared with the other videos, the problem I have with this type of narrative is that it makes it sound so easy to make a ton of money. All you have to do is decide you're gonna start a coaching business, learn how to sell, find 20 or 60 people that wanna buy from you and then duplicate that over and over again. Wouldn't that be great? Now, obviously I understand this is possible. This person is probably doing that alongside a lot of other people business coaches, business coaches that are doing the same thing. They have 20 to 60 clients a month and they're charging them $500 and they're making whatever the math works out to with that amount of money. But the reality is for most people, it's not going to be this easy. And again, with this coach in particular, if this video is from who I think it's from, they actually gained a following in a separate industry to close to half a million people, I think, and then shifted into business coaching. So they had a massive platform to launch their coaching business off of. Once they were able to convince a few people to come into that funnel, they were then able to collect client testimonials, get that social proof, and then use that to leverage to get more clients. And so there is sort of a piece of privilege, again, that's at play that a lot of these coaches don't talk about in the content like this, where they just wanna make it sound really easy, but they had that sort of upper hand of something that they, to their own credit, did build on their own, but then they're then able to use that and leverage it to see the success that they see but make it seem like anyone who's starting with zero will have the same success when that's simply not the reality. Okay, here is the last video. It's titled a half million dollar content strategy. Here's my half a million dollar content strategy. It's two buckets. And I need you to do it and I need you to post every single day because this is it. This is it. Bit making money is really easy. You guys, can you tell me I lost it? Making money is really easy to do, and I'm gonna break it down for you in the simplest way possible, so buckle your seatbelts, let's go, and all you have to do is take action. So the first one is educational content. Educate us around whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you teach. Teach us how to get the results that you're teaching inside of your programs, and those results are probably things that you're already good at and things that you've done in your life. Second part is storytelling content. Tell stories about how you've achieved those things or how you've helped clients achieve those things, problems you've overcome along the way to get that result or problems your clients have overcome along the way to get that result. Okay, I'm gonna pause this here just for a second because there's something in my head that I wanna share before I continue to watch. And that's this idea of using our own story to try and sell people on whatever it is that we're selling. So. 
My name's Danielle. In 2018, I quit my full-time job and started a business. I could very well start a coaching business that says, if you want to quit your job and start your own business, here are the steps you need to follow. But you're never going to find me doing that because what was true for my reality isn't going to be true for other people. And I don't want to sell people on an idea or on a false reality, I guess you could say. And so I was actually having this conversation with someone that I know recently where someone had asked me how much money I make on average each month. And I wasn't comfortable answering that question for this exact reason, because the amount of money that I make from brand deals, from creating content, from clients that I work with is true for me and the work that I do and the work that I've done. But for me to share that to you in hopes that you could then figure out how much money you're going to make it's just not the same. We're in different areas. We have different expertise. We have different niches and those things are worth different amounts of money. And so for me to say, oh, I make $5,000, $10,000, $500 a month, it doesn't matter because my reality is always going to be different from yours. And what I see in particular in this online space is people selling other people on the idea of, I did this, therefore you can do this too. Okay, let's continue. These two pieces of content are going to help position you as the expert. Some of you are literally, I don't even know what you're educating on. I'm pretty sure you don't even know what you're saying. Like go look at your content, ask yourself, if I were to view this as a buyer, would I learn something from this piece of content? If you were literally half assing your content and throwing stuff up on the internet, no wonder no one's buying from you. Think, I need you to think about your content. I'm just, I'm giving all of y'all love and shove. You can tell me right, you can, you can tell right now, I'm just like, do it. <laughs> think about your content. Is it actually educating someone or is it just some fluffy BS that no one actually cares about? Can you get narrow? Can you get specific? For example, I would never say like, how to decrease your anxiety. I would say something more specific like, how to stop drinking three cups of coffee per day, fall asleep at night without your having your mind race and wake up feeling excited for the day instead of insert um, with parentheses, instead of feeling anxious about your job. It's so specific. I'm speaking right to someone who has a million cups of coffee per day. They feel stressed out, who falls asleep at night with their mind racing and who wakes up every day anxious for work. That's specific then how to decrease your anxiety. Like have a real conversation with your audience like they're humans. In case you forgot, on the other side of these screens are real human beings. And if you just started treating them like you cared about them and like you actually wanted to help them out, I guarantee you'd make more money. Okay, again, I don't think this person is inherently wrong. I teach a lot of these same strategies to my clients. When we are creating content online, there is this need that we have to position ourselves as an authority, as an expert. Okay, my camera died again and I have no idea where I was at with that train of thought. But I think ultimately at the end of the day, what we can take away from many of these videos is that a lot of the times what we're seeing online is not the whole picture of the reality of these individuals. A lot of people don't really want to share the missteps that it took to get them where they are. They want to paint this perfect picture that if you start a business and you learn how to get clients and you learn what to post on social media, you're going to do great. And so I think the one point I was making is that a lot of the principles that that last video shared about how to be successful on social media is a lot of the same stuff I teach, you know, know who you're talking to, show up with your solution, share it over and over and over again. But that alone is not going to be the thing that helps you to make a million dollars in your business. You need to also have the strategy and the systems in place to build a business that people can buy from and are actually delivered a product or service that they were promised. So all that to say, be careful out there on the internet. It's a wild, wild place. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to hear your feedback down in the comments. And if you have video content or videos or ads that you've seen online that you want my commentary on, please feel free to send me an email. My email address is linked down below. I'm really enjoying this style of content and I would love to here if you're enjoying it as well. But on that note, that's going to be it for this week. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every Friday. You can follow me over on Instagram and TikTok where I post daily small business tips and I will be back again so, so soon.